Okay, this is it. Are you ready for the list? Here it is. Milk, bread, yogurts, bananas. This isn't the list I was supposed to be working on? Hello there, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Happy 2019. It's uh, New Year's Day. Uh, we made it through the end of another year and the end of another year of music. Uh, and we've made it just barely to the end of Listmania, Listmageddon, Listpocalypse. Okay, I'm done. Uh, but seriously, when it comes to these year-end lists, I am done. Uh, honestly, if anybody tells you that doing these year-end music lists is not a pain in the ass, they're lying. Seriously. It may be fun, but it's a pain in the ass. Honestly. Um, one of my YouTube friends got seriously burned out on doing year-end lists, and another one chose not to do them at all. And I'm starting to think he's a smart one. Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, like I said, it's been fun, but it's been a pain in the ass. But I found the secret to doing it, to min avoid or hopefully minimize the, the uh, burnout or the brain fry. When you've gotten your list 90% where you want it, walk away from it for an hour, come back, look at it again, if, and make any last-minute changes that you want to that come to you right away, but after that, lock it in. Because it's never going to be 100% exactly the way you want it. Because when you think about it, these lists, your favorite albums are based on how you feel about them. And how you feel about them changes depending on your mood. So, and I mean, with me, I know that next week I'm going to be feel differently about these lists. I'm going to say, oh, I should have put this one here, or I should have put that one there, or should have ranked that one higher, or that one lower, or I should have swapped these two. You know, it's, it's just, it's a losing battle, okay? So, if you keep obsessing, if, if you keep looking for 100% perfection, you're going to be up until 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so, yeah, and that's not good for anybody. So, yeah, take my advice. Your lists are going to be 90 to maybe 95% perfect, and that's going to be it. So, uh, but anyway, enough chitter-chatter. Uh, this is my list of my favorite albums of 2018. It was funny, about halfway through the year, I thought it was going to be maybe a 15-item list. I mean, I just there were just not a lot of uh, albums coming my way that I was interested in, but... I should have known better by the end of the year, just a few hours ago actually, it was going to be a 25 item list, but I decided to go ahead and bump it up to 30. Uh, just because I, I just hate leaving things off the list that that I like enough to let people know about. And yes, I am still, even with a 30 item list, I am cl including five honorable mentions on top of that. So uh, just a couple of quick comments before I get started on my list. Uh, my opinions on these albums and their positions in my list are my own personal opinions. Now, that should go without saying, but, well, you know the internet. Uh, music is an art form, and art is subjective, so my opinions are neither wrong nor right, and, well, neither are yours. Uh, but also, when I was ranking these albums, well, I put my own feelings about them ahead of uh, their artistic merit, you know, how good the, um, the songwriting is, both lyrically and melodically, uh, takes a second uh, seat to how I feel about the songs, obviously, since, you know, that's why this list is called My Favorite Albums of the Year and not The Best Albums of the Year. So, there you have it. Uh, but anyway, let's just get the uh, honorable mentions out of the way first. Uh, first honorable mention is Bridges by Josh Groban. Uh, it's just got a great mix of uh, multilingual tracks, tracks in like three or four different languages. you got guest appearances by Sarah McLaughlin, uh, Jennifer Nettles, Andrea Bocelli, and you've got, uh, not only do you have a Simon and Garfunkel cover, Bridge Over Troubled Water, but on the deluxe edition, you've got a Billy Joel cover. She's always a woman. So, how can you go wrong? And besides, his voice is just gorgeous. I mean, seriously. As it always is. Uh, second runner-up is Collateral by Philip Phillips, uh, American Idol winner from a few years back. Uh, this was, I think, the first item, if I remember correctly, that I reviewed on my channel back in February? March? Uh, but yeah, it's a, a great album. He's really found his niche. It's kind of blue-eyed soul, heart uh, cross with Heartland Rock, sort of, you know. But yeah, it's just a, a very, very good album. The uh, American Idols usually run out of steam by their second or third album, but Philip Phillips is going strong, and I'm looking forward to, to what we see out of his fourth. Third runner-up is Alessia Cara, The Pains of Growing. I was aware of her existence uh, ever since her debut album, but I found out about her uh, thanks to a profile on CBS Sunday Morning uh, a few weeks ago. 
So yeah, I uh, found her debut album on CD for five bucks and uh, listened to it and thought it was pretty good. So I picked up her uh, sophomore album. Uh, not bad. You know, not good enough to be ranked as with the other honorable mentions, but pretty good. Good enough that I wanted to give it a shout out. Uh, fourth runner-up is Love by Michael Bublé. And honestly, you get what you have, we've come to expect from Michael Bublé, which is absolutely flawless vocals and fantastic renditions of uh, classic American songbook standards, as well as a few original compositions, one of which is co-written and features backing vocals by Charlie Puth. And that, and that was a selling point for me on this one. So yeah, very, very good album. And the fifth runner-up, and this was, I really wanted to include this in the actual countdown, but I only had 30 spots. Uh, this one is Ultraphonics and their album Original Human Music. This is a uh, super group featuring, I saved the hype sticker to, uh, for reference, Corey Glover, the frontman and lead vocalist for Living Color, the 80s rock band, uh, George Lynch from Dawkin and Lynch Mob, uh, Pancho Tomaselli, who was a later member of War and Tower of Power, as well as Chris Moore. So if anybody tells you, or, or if you think that true rock music is dead now, check this out. Thick, heavy bass guitars and just great crunchy uh, rhythm r guitars, rock, uh, heavy drums, just rock. I mean, through and through, it was just fantastic. Okay, let's head on into the actual countdown while I've still got some energy and sanity left. Uh, number 30, starting off, is uh, Palo Santo, the sophomore album by indie pop group Years and Years. Uh, what I liked about this one is it's got interesting um, percussion elements in it and some uh, kind of ethnic instrumentation. It's almost got a world music element in addition to their uh, the regular you know synth pop uh, type of stuff. So yeah, uh, a good bunch of good tracks on here, just very good. Not quite as good as their debut album in my opinion, uh, Communion, but still very good uh, and worth a listen, as are all the items on this list. Uh, number 29 is Love Monster, the debut album by Amy Shark. She is an indie pop uh, artist who's uh, one of several CDs that a particular item higher up in my countdown persuaded me to buy this year. Uh, when, one reason why that album is so high up in my countdown. But yeah, she's got a good style, um, interesting songs, a little bit of uh, idiosyncratic in the vocal department. Uh, I, I reviewed the album earlier on in, in the year in my channel. Uh, you can hear my my complaints though they are very small. But yeah, very good songs, uh, and she's got a good voice despite its idiosyncrasies, so yeah, very good album. Number 28 is the latest effort by singer-songwriter Jason Mraz, entitled No. Uh, if this is not everybody's cup of tea. It can be a little bit, uh, possibly a little pretentious sounding uh, for some people, but uh, I have there's a likability about it. Um, one thing I needed this year was breezy, feel-good music, and uh, this definitely uh, uh, filled the bill on that. And uh, one of the selling points is he's got a guest appearance by Megan Trainer on here. I like Megan Trainer. what can I say? So, but yeah, uh, several toe-tapping songs uh, with, you know, singable lyrics, possibly cheesy lyrics here and there, but what can I say? I like it. Uh, number 27. I kind of wanted to rank this one higher, but I haven't been listening to it for very long, and it is a little bit different. Uh, I, I gotta say, it, it's, yeah, it's just the one reason why it's not higher up is it is kind of different sounding. It is a Trench by 21 Pilots. Uh, it got rave reviews this year, so I'm going to be uh, possibly looked down at uh, by some people by ranking this one so low in my countdown. But, uh, I mean, I recognize the talent that these guys have in crafting songs and interesting, uh, you know, in terms of the lyrics and the melodies and the instrumentation. Very, very unique. And uh, one of the things that's taking me a while to get into this is I'm not big on concept albums. And this is a concept album. I mean, you know, the narrative is not really so terribly involved and stuff that people could easily not get it. I guess you say it's, that's the best I can you know, in my diminished capacity. But, uh, but yeah, still, it's, it, it is growing on me, though. And, uh, you know, as I say, a month from now, this could be 10 steps higher in my countdown. So, but yeah, uh, definitely, it was worth buying for me. Uh, for me. Number 26 uh, is one of the most recent entries in my countdown, uh, one of the reasons why it's so low. But uh, I, I've been enjoying it. Uh, the latest album by MGMT, Little Dark Age. 
Now, I really enjoyed MGMT's debut album, Oracular Spectacular, uh, but their sophomore album, Congratulations, just it just did not do a thing for me, and I ended up selling it to the record store for, for trade credit uh, shortly after. And so they basically fell off my radar. I didn't even pay attention to, to their last album, their self-titled album. But then I started hearing buzz about uh, year-end buzz about this album, and... Uh, decided to check out the songs on YouTube and liked what I heard. This this definitely goes back to the the indie synth, slightly psychedelic uh, type of stuff that was in their debut album. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad I uh, checked them out and I might uh, actually go back and check out their other, their two in-between albums, uh, possibly. See if there was anything I might have been missing. Uh, number 25 is The Now Now by Gorillaz. And this one, uh, Gorillaz, I had been dismissing, I, as I mentioned in my vi last video, my favorite uh, singles. I basically dismissed Gorillaz as just another, another hip-hop act, and even a lesser one because they're, uh, they're a virtual band. Uh, but when I, heard, when I heard, first of all, that they were going to feature George Benson on a track, I've loved George Benson for years, I thought, okay, these guys are worth checking out if they, you know, if they recognize and appreciate classic musicians like uh, George Benson. So, And yeah, I love the song. I'm not huge on the the more atmospheric type stuff that, you know, that plays in the background. It Well, it's one of those things that it needs to be a certain way for me to enjoy it. Otherwise, it'll get boring. And this one, this one does not get boring on me. Um, a lot of Gorillaz fans, hardcore Gorillaz fans, were not happy with this album because it's so different. But because I am a newcomer to Gorillaz, I was just totally fine with this. So, uh, it is number 25 in my countdown, so, yeah, very good album. Number 24 is another newcomer to my countdown, uh, and this one came out in October, I believe it was, November, and I had never heard of this guy before. Uh, what sold me with uh, Brian Newman and his debut album, Showboat, is uh, there was a track on here featuring vocals by Lady Gaga. Uh, he is apparently a, uh, a friend and uh, sometimes collaborator with Lady Gaga. He is a jazz trumpet, uh, trumpetist, trumpet player whatever you call uh, And this is about, uh, about half the songs on this are instrumental and the other half are vocal. Uh, and he does some of the vocals, but yeah, Lady Gaga features on a rendition of Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood, a uh, Animals song, I believe, and also a classic uh, 60s jazz song. But yeah, it is, it's very good. I, I really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, he also featured on Lady Gaga's uh, collaborative album with Tony Bennett a few years back. So uh, I figured he was worth checking out, and uh, turns out he was. Yeah, it's number 24 on my countdown. Number 23 is uh, another newcomer. Uh, several newcomers in the bottom half of my list, it turns out. Uh, I, I mentioned this guy in my favorite singles uh, video yesterday, uh, Callum Scott. Uh, this is the special edition of his album, Only Human. And a friend of mine uh, clued me into him. I, I think I might have been aware, vaguely aware of his existence until this friend um, sent me a link to a video and it turns out he, he's just got a beautiful voice, a fantastic voice and uh, the special edition uh, sold me because of uh, the single that was put out you know, on as, as, an, as an added track on this album uh, it's called No Matter What and but yeah this album is just full of uh, mostly ballads, probably two-thirds ballads and one-third uh, upbeat uh, mid tempo or mid tempo or upbeat songs, but it's really good. He's he's got a good style, a good voice, and uh, yeah, I believe he was a Britain's Got Talent finalist or winner, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, very very good uh, good stuff. Number twenty two on my countdown is a bit of an unusual item. It is a compilation Doctor Demento covered in punk. Now a bit of a backstory here. I uh, grew up down in Southern California and listen to Dr. Demento's radio show live. That was the only place to hear it live, was down in Southern California. Every Sunday night, grew up listening to it, and uh, so I basically had to have this one, and I actually got to meet Dr. Demento in person up in Portland. He was doing a CD signing up at uh, Music Millennium up there, and yeah, it was just a, a wonderful experience. Uh, you know, waited my whole life, basically, to meet Dr. Demento, and the album is very entertaining. It is a uh, some of the most classic, uh, well-known songs from the history of the Dr. Mento show, covered by punk artists. And with a couple of exceptions, uh, Weird Al Yankovic actually covers a Ramones song on here, and you, if you've watched me long enough, you know I am a huge fan of Weird Al Yankovic, so, and that's kind of an exclusive on here. 
but yeah, two discs full of just great uh, mad music and crazy comedy, as uh, was the catchphrase for Dr. Demento. But yeah, a very entertaining and fun collection. Uh, just something unusual. And uh, number 21 is uh, by an artist that I just got clued into this year. And it was actually a few months after this album was released back in February. Uh, but it turns out I, I really uh, enjoy this guy, and I'm already looking forward to his next album, Borns, with his uh, sophomore album, Blue Madonna. And uh, yeah, just a bunch of good uh, singer-songwriter pop songs. Uh, this guy reminds me a little bit of Rufus Wainwright. Just got a little bit of that, uh, you know, cabaret-ish pop, uh, slightly offbeat sensibility to him. Not quite as pronounced as Rufus Wainwright, but still just seems to have, and just kind of the visual aesthetic a little bit too. Uh, yeah, but yeah, a bunch of great songs on here. My favorite song in here is probably Faded Heart. And, uh, you know, I could name two or three other songs on here that are uh, a lot of fun. So yeah, very good album. Okay, we're heading into the top 20 now. Uh, my number 20 pick is Life by Boy George and Culture Club. Uh, I reviewed this album a uh, couple months ago, and uh, yeah, it was very good. Um, I, of course, being an 80s kid, I was a big fan of Boy George and Culture Club back in their heyday. And this was uh, their comeback album of sorts after, what, who knows how many years in uh, in limbo, I guess you'd say. But yeah, a bunch of good songs on here. Uh, Let Somebody Love You, uh, What a Sorry Mean is a great ballad. Oil and Water, More Than Silence, uh, the title track. Um, Human Zoo is kind of an odd song just because of the uh, strange lyrics in it. But uh, yeah, many more hits than misses on this album. And a, a, a good return to form for the cult, uh, Boy George and Culture Club. Especially if you're an 80s kid like me and uh, have been missing them lately. Give that one a try. Number 19 is Good Thing, the sophomore album by soul singer Leon Bridges. Uh, I'm a big Sam Cooke fan, so I was a huge fan of his debut album. But uh, like probably a lot of other people, I was kind of secretly hoping, as good as that album was, I was hoping that he wasn't going to end up writing Sam Cooke's coattails for his entire career. And this is definitely, it's a good transitional album. It's still got some of the 60s soul elements, but he's also throwing in uh, influences from pretty much every decade since. So, uh, you know, 80s, 90s, even up to the 2000s. So yeah, a, a very good album, a great uh, step up and a kind of a, a, you know, branching out of sorts for him. So yeah, definitely worth picking up there. Number 18 is the major label debut by indie rock band Moon Taxi, Let the Record Play. Uh, very good, uh, very, very good album. Um, they put out two albums, I think, on uh, independently uh, previous prior to this one. I have not checked out either of those. This is my first exposure to the band, and this was actually one of the first albums I reviewed on my channel back in uh, the spring. Very good stuff. Uh, they remind me a little bit of uh, another indie rock band uh, from recently uh, called Magic. But uh, yeah, just just very good album. What can I say? Um, I could name half the tracks on here. I know there's some of these albums on this countdown, I just can't think of a lot to say about them, and I feel kind of stupid doing that, so, you know, just sitting here looking dumb. But, uh, well, part of it is brain fry from, you know, year-end list madness. But another part of it is I like to think that these albums' positions on my countdown will sort of speak for themselves, and maybe you'll feel compelled to, you know, from what little I say about some of them, you'll feel compelled to, you know, go out and check them out, you know, YouTube, Spotify, wherever. And, hey, what's the worst that'll happen? You won't like them, right? So, uh, anyway, back to the countdown. Uh, number 17 is a compilation, uh, Revamp. It is uh, one of two Elton John and Bernie Taupin tribute albums that came out uh, in the spring, I believe. And two things about these two albums. Uh, the dazzling array of guest artists on here who interpret their songs. Coldplay, uh, Alessia Cara. Uh, Ed Sheeran, Florence and the Machine, The Killers, Sam Smith, Miley Cyrus, Lady Gaga. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, but the other thing about these two albums is you really notice when listening to them how Elton John and Bernie Taupin's songs transcend time, you know, the time that they're written, and also genre. You know, it doesn't matter what, you know, what genre they're uh, arranged into. Like, this one is the rock and pop version. And... Number 16 on my countdown actually is the country and folk version, Restoration. Uh, I I was going to... I thought about having both of them as a tie so that I could squeeze one more album into my countdown, but I decided to... Uh, I decided against that. But uh, and yeah, this one... Uh, I actually like this one as 
since it's one position higher on my count, and I actually do like this one a little bit better, uh, the country and folk one, and that surprises me. Uh, Marin Morris, Don Henley, uh, Vince Gill, Miranda Lambert, Chris Stapleton, Casey Musgraves, uh, and Miley Cyrus actually appears on both uh, the country and pop versions. Uh, Roseanne Cash, Emily, Emmy Lou Harris, Willie Nelson. I mean, both of these albums, in my opinion, are totally worth picking up and uh, listening to. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're in my top 20. Uh, now on to number 15. This is the fifth album, the latest album by the Kooks, uh, Let's Go Sunshine. And this one kind of surprised me. I was a little more than lukewarm on the Kooks, and so when I saw this album uh, come out, I, it took me you know, a few weeks to pick it up. But uh, yeah, I ended up uh, really loving it. Uh, it's just got a bunch of great songs on here. Uh, a single that I mentioned in my video yesterday, Chicken Bone, that is... Uh, by far the catchiest song on here. But yeah, just a whole bunch of great songs. Um, Four Leaf Clover, Weight of the World, No Pressure. Um, my brain's starting to fizzle out here. I'm glad I'm getting close to the end of the countdown. But yeah, check out these guys if, you, if you've never heard of them or if you, or if you haven't checked out this album yet. I, I recommend it. Uh, and I sh shouldn't have to say I recommend these albums because I'm getting into the top 15, so... If I keep saying it, just ignore me. Number 14 is actually uh, the newest entry in my countdown. I actually just picked up the CD well, a week and a half ago, maybe. Uh, it is the latest album by Elvis Costello and the Imposters. Look now. Uh, this is the first Elvis Costello album that I've perhaps the first one that I've ever bought. Uh, I've got his greatest hits, two disc greatest hits over my shoulder back here. I've had it for a long time. But yeah, I've never really delved into Elvis Costello's uh, studio albums before. And yeah, the early buzz, or the, or the buzz that I read about it from uh, people who got their year-end best of lists in early and a couple other things uh, intrigued me. And so did the fact that I heard that uh, Carol King and Burt Bacharach were involved in uh, some of the songwriting on this album. So. Yeah, so yeah, I picked it up, or, or went to YouTube and listened to the songs, and really enjoyed them, so picked it up, and uh, yeah, it continues to grow on me, so it could be in my top ten in a couple weeks from now. Uh, number thirteen is uh, the latest by the 1975, A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. Now, this is another band that uh, I mentioned when I talked about uh, Amy Shark. Uh, I mentioned a particular soundtrack album that got me into a few other artists or albums. I had tried out the 1975 a couple of years ago and just for some reason they didn't do anything for me, but uh, thanks to this soundtrack that shall be named uh, pretty soon, uh, I got back into them and uh, when this album came out I picked it up and was very intrigued. It has a lot of different song stylings in it and... but they do all of them well. I mean it's got, you know, some... oh gosh, what's some like 80s R&B type stuff and then some I think maybe a new wave song or two, a new wave styled song or two, and then, you know, other, you know, singer songwriter type of stuff, and then just a bouncy blue eyed soul type thing. And it's just, they do all of these genres like they were born to do them. I, I don't know how they're so versatile and so good at what they do with these songs. So, uh, it, there, it is a little bit quirky in a couple places though, too. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's number 13 on my countdown. So, uh, yeah, very good album. Number 12 on my countdown is by a lesser-known jazz singer who I think deserves to be much better known than she is, Madeline Peru, and her latest album, Anthem. Uh, it's just fantastic, and she reminds me of, and there I go again with my brain fry, I'm not going to be able to think of her name, but uh, at least one of the classic jazz chanteuses from like the 40s and 50s, just one of those unique and timeless voices, just beautiful songs. Uh, this album is made up of almost entirely original songs. Uh, there's a song in French, which I have a soft spot for French songs. But the, And she gets into a couple of uh, songs with um, socio-political uh, subject matter in them. Uh, All My Heroes and The Brand New Deal. And, I mean, there are plenty of other good songs on here. A couple of songs that are a little weird and feel a little bit out of place and a little bit fluff, but by far, you know, far more great songs on here than, than mediocre songs. Just an, an excellent, excellent album. And number 11 
is one that is uh, near and dear to my heart for several reasons. It is Love is Here to Stay by Tony Bennett and Diana Krall, two of my absolute favorite um, classic jazz and uh, so American songbook singers have finally teamed up for an absolutely gorgeous album. And uh, yeah, what can I say? I mean, their voices blend spectacularly. And uh, I actually became a Diana Krall fan thanks to my late sister. So, and, and she would have absolutely dearly loved this album. And that's another reason why it's, it's so close to my heart. But uh, yeah, I mean, every song on here, I mean, you could put the track listing on a dartboard, throw a dart at a song, and it's good. Uh, so yeah, definitely check this out if, if you do if you like this kind of stuff. It's a, a an album not to be missed. Okay, we're in the home stretch, the top ten. Okay, Tom, you can power through this, right? Uh, number ten really surprised me. Uh, it surprised me that this album is so high in my countdown. Uh, a friend and fellow YouTuber uh, told me a few months back, three or four months ago, that this album was uh, his number one album of the year so far which surprised me because he is just not into that kind of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, that told me that uh, if he likes it so much, maybe I should try it out too. And you should know before I tell you who this is that it's hard enough for me to get into uh, female musicians, not strictly because they're female, but because of, depending on how much their lyrics touch on the female experience, you know, I'm a guy, so I'm not going to identify with that quite so much. And this artist is also african-american and same reason it's a little bit more difficult for me to get into uh, black artists african-american artists you know because if their lyrics touch enough on the black experience you know i'm just not going to connect with the music and she does touch on those two topics but still they transcend the whole audience i mean okay dirty computer by janelle monet uh it is it got critical acclaim from all sectors and in my opinion I think it deserves it. Uh, it's just, you know, the artistry of the songs really transcends any of the lyrics that might touch on the female experience or the African-American experience. Uh, or, or well, the queer experience, I, I kind of connect with that. But uh, yeah, just, I mean, every song on here is just well crafted and as I said, I had, I was not expecting, this took me by surprise that I would enjoy this so much. Crazy Classic Life, uh, oh gosh, what else? Americans, that's a very biting uh, satire or a biting political commentary, socio-political commentary. And uh, Brian Wilson features on a song, and so does Pharrell Williams. I mean, that, that you know, the guest appearances on here run the gamut from one end to the other. So, yes, an, an excellent album. Uh, and transcends, as I said, um, gender boundaries, ethnic boundaries, racial boundaries. Uh, it's very, very worth picking up and listening to. Especially coming from you know somebody like me, like I said, who does not often connect with R and B music. So, but anyway, speaking kind of sorta of R and B music, my number nine pick in my countdown is Shawn Mendes' self-titled third album. Now, this disappointed me at first because uh, he seemed to, with his previous two albums, he seemed to be moving in more of a uh, guitar pop rock sort of a thing. And uh, but with this album, he kind of switched up gears and went more toward a an R&B kind of a thing. So, uh, which, you know, as I said, disappointed me at first, although I really did like the singles off this album, uh, In My Blood, which was a uh, an honorable mention in my singles of the year, uh, in my last video. While I was disappointed in the artistic direction, I appreciated that he does seem to be maturing as an artist. So, I mean, hey, if this is the direction he's going in, so be it. I mean, if it if it brings out his maturity as an artist but yeah youth featuring khalid is another standout track uh, that was my number one single of the year fallen all in you uh nervous a lot of people seem to love lost in japan but that was just not for some reason it just didn't do much for me uh but yeah a bunch of great songs on here what can i say it is it's number nine in my countdown so yeah a very a very good album it definitely grew on me a lot Okay, my number eight favorite album of 2018 is Staying at Tomorrow's by George Ezra. This is his sophomore album. And uh, what I love about him is his his very um, unique, rich baritone voice. Uh, it's just a fantastic voice, and he's got some great bouncy songs on here, as you can you can kind of sort of tell, is, is hinted at by the pink uh, text here on the cover. And yeah, a, a, yeah, as I said, a bunch of great bouncy songs. Uh, it's a, another very feel-good album that I was uh, 
was the kind of stuff that I needed this year. So yeah, an excellent album. Can't think of a whole lot more to say about it. Uh, go check it out if you haven't yet. Number seven this year is a soundtrack. It is a soundtrack from the movie Love, Simon. And it is so high on this countdown, well, partly because I love pretty much all the songs on it, but uh, also because it is responsible for making me buy, what, close to ten other CDs this year, uh, just because of what was on this album. Uh, I fell in love with Bleachers because of uh, this, this album. Uh, it's got four songs from the Bleachers on here, uh, two of which are from one of his previous CDs that I, I had to buy. Uh, it's responsible for my new favorite Christmas song, Someday at Christmas by the Jackson 5. Uh, and then there's the, and it may be by the Amy Shark CD and uh, the 1975. I, I fell back in love with the 1975 thanks to this album. Uh, and there are also a couple of good songs on here that are ex exclusive to this album. It's got a Troy Savon song on here. So yeah, and oh, Brenton Wood, the Oogum Boogum song is one of my all-time favorites. I absolutely love that song, so yeah. I'm kind of surprised this didn't end up in my top five, but there are just a few albums that were better than this one. But yeah, definitely a, the best movie I've seen in a long time. It made me cry, and the soundtrack is just as good. Yeah. Number six on my list this year is Jubilee Road, the third album by British singer-songwriter Tom O'Dell. And uh, yeah, I don't know what I can say that I didn't say in my review a couple uh, months ago, but yeah, just great songs from top to bottom. One of the most beautiful male-female vocal duets that I heard all year long. Half as good as you, featuring Alice Merton. Uh, just, yeah, some great, great songs on here. What can I say? I mean, just like with most of these uh, top ten albums, as I said, throw a dart at the track listing, you're going to hit a great song. So yeah, just uh, check out Tom O'Dell if you haven't yet. A China Dolls is another great standout. Son of an Only Child. Go Tell Her Now. Uh, if you want to love somebody, the... Uh, uh, debut single from the album. Just, yeah, fantastic, top to bottom. Go check it out. Okay, number five. Uh, this one surprised me, too. I'm uh, kind of surprised that it uh, climbed so high in my countdown, but it, what can I say, just kept growing and growing on me. Uh, Rocket, the latest album by Edie Perkel and New Bohemians, the uh, group from the 80s and 90s with their latest effort. Uh, just, yeah, one, gr one great song after another. What Makes You Happy, that's got a bit of a Sheryl Crow, Sheryl Crow kind of vibe. Uh, Trust is another great song. It's kind of a, a jazzy sort of thing. And Obvious is another jazzy type song. Green Magic is a good song. Uh, Exaggerate, Eyes in the Window. Just check the album out. I, I'm just going to end up listing the entire track listing here. So, uh, yeah, that was number five. And a uh, well-earned position on my countdown, as are all of these. Number four is the sophomore album by Troy Sivan, entitled Bloom. Uh, yeah, what can I say about Troy Sivan? He's, uh, I've, I've got a bit of a music geek crush on him. He's just fantastic. He's uh, kind of inspiring in a way. He's just got uh, real inspiration. As I said in my hit singles video yesterday, if I'd had an artist like Troy Sivan to listen to when I was growing up, my life would be very different. Um, but yeah, My 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 is a fantastic song, one of the singles on there. Bloom is... Uh, another great song and what I love about him is that first of all he knows how to craft a great pop song uh, just with a startling ability for somebody as young as he is and also the songs are not fluff they've got you know they've got real substance to the lyrics they're they're personal you can feel how personal the songs are to him but uh, yeah just one good song after another on here as well Plum is another good one another one that I really like so yeah what can I say? Uh, number three is uh, an album that was on a lot of people's best of lists at year end. Uh, a couple of YouTubers I saw put it at number one. Uh, didn't quite make it there for me, obviously, but it is definitely one of my favorite albums of the year. Uh, Golden Hour by Casey Musgraves. Uh, I've, I've loved her since the beginning, since her first album. She, she's got a bit of a spunky and uh, against the grain attitude that I've, I've just loved. And this album kind of uh, carries that on. I mean, she's she is technically a country artist, but she puts so much more into these songs than country. Uh, she's she doesn't keep herself boxed into traditional genre labels, which is something I've I always admire in our in an artist. She's got a little bit of a disco vibe with uh, oh, what's that song? High Horse, <laughs> Brain Fry. What can I tell you? 
and uh, Oh What a World is a good song. Uh, Space Cowboy is one of my favorites. It's a, a great ballad. Lonely Weekend, Slow Burn. I, again, I could list the entire track list. Just uh, yeah, You probably know about this album. You've probably listened to it, but if you haven't, you must. It's just an excellent album. Okay, my runner-up for album of the year. This one might be a little bit of a controversial choice. Um, people liked it, but they didn't rave about it. As, certainly not as much as uh, Golden Hour. But what can I say? This this list is my favorite albums, not necessarily the best albums. But uh, yeah, my number two choice is Voice Notes by Charlie Puth. I just, you know, what can I say? I just love this album from top to bottom. I waited a long time for this to come out. And uh, one of the things about Charlie Puth that I like doesn't much have much to do with his in front of the mic persona. I read interviews with Charlie and uh, he is a true student of music. I mean, he just he just loves everything about music. He, he was actually originally uh, went to school to be a songwriter and producer, not a recording artist. So, you know, he's got very much of a, a music, a nuts and bolts music mind. So yeah, he, he just, you know, he knows how to put a pop song, to, pop song together, as is evidenced on this album. It's uh, much better than his first album, although I actually did kind of like his first album. A lot of people trashed it, but uh, yeah, I mean, every song on here, the, the first two singles just totally got my got my attention. <laughs> attention was uh, the first single, and How Long was the second. Uh, there was some Michael Jackson in How Long, I felt. Uh, just seemed to have a, an 80s Michael Jackson vibe. Uh, but two of the standout tracks feature guest vocalists. Uh, not that he doesn't do great songs on his own. It's just he just happened to Hit it out of the ballpark, in my opinion, with a couple of these songs. If You Leave Me Now, featuring Boys to Men. Oh, that is one of the most gorgeous ballads I heard all year long. And and Change, featuring James Taylor. That was in my uh, favorite singles list uh, yesterday. But, yeah, just pretty much every song on here. There are a couple of misfires, a couple of eh songs. But, uh, by and large, you know, like I said, this is, this is number two for the year for me. Uh, just an excellent, fantastic album. I can't complain. I listened to the whole thing when I put it on. But uh, yeah, another great album. But my number one really surprised me. Uh, if you had asked me six months ago if I was eagerly awaiting an album by this artist, I would have laughed in your face, let alone that they would end up in my number one album of the year spot. It is Barbara Streisand with her album Walls. Now, Normally I go into music for escapism, and this is kind of far from it, which, I mean, that makes it all the more incredible that this is my number one pick, uh, because it is very much, from top to bottom, is socio-political commentary. She pulls no punches against Donald Trump and uh, other socio-political ills in general uh, that are going on in the country and the world right now. Um... I could say it again. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Every song on here is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, as, as I said, I go into music for escapism. But for some reason, this album, this was an album that I totally needed, and I can tell now that I'm going to go back to for comfort um, again and again, probably all through. Well, basically, as long as Trump is in the White House, let's put it that way. But yeah, and. and an absolutely amazing album. She's still got her voice, you know, all these years later. She's, what, mid to late 70s, I think she is now. And her voice is just absolutely as resonant and flawless as ever. And some, some great songs on here. As I said, um, Love's Never Wrong is a great uh, song about all-inclusiveness and love. Uh, Don't Lie to Me was the first single. And uh, The Rain Will Fall is another absolute standout. And an interesting... Uh, medley between Imagine, the John Lennon song, and What a Wonderful World, the old uh, songbook standard. Uh, just very well done. The lyrics are inter interlaced between the two songs. It's not one song and then the other. Just very, very masterfully done. Uh, the entire album is just fantastically done. So yeah, Walls by Barbara Streisand somehow is my number one album of the year, And but I have no regrets at putting it at number one. It is just a fantastic album. It's uh, what I needed to hear. It was the most moving album by far all year long for me, which is why it puts it at number one. So, uh, yeah, that is my countdown. My voice is kind of shot, as you can probably tell. I hope you really enjoyed this countdown. I enjoyed putting it together, despite it almost making me clinically insane. Number 22 on me. Give me 
the major label debut album by... Who the f*** are these guys? Um, I look forward to what 2019 is going to bring. Uh, I'll do, I'll be doing a bit of a like a New Year's wrap up, you know, year in review, year to come sort of a video. It's going to be a really informal thing, kind of a a, a state of the YouTube channel address, if you will. Um, that'll be coming up later this week, maybe this weekend. But after that, I'm going to take at least one weekend off, possibly two. So you may not hear from me for half of January. Uh, just because I, I need to kind of decompress from all this. But uh, anyway, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed uh, List Mania, my end of year celebration. I certainly enjoyed uh, all of our, all of my fellow YouTubers' uh, lists, SMEB reviews, um, True North reviews, Young Entertainment Specialists, and probably at least a couple of other channels whose names are escaping me right now, but they are all linked to in my comments below, so check out the links down there. They are all worth watching. I look forward to their videos all the time, so check out the links in my description. Uh, please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. I would love to have you as a subscriber to ring in the new year. Uh, and again, happy 2019. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hope you join me in the new year. More music to come. And again, thank you so much for watching. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.